Welcome to the Anti Noise Experience, the podcast Endurance Noise Random Musings. It's September 13, 2020, Sunday morning here in Bakersfield, California. We actually have blue skies, not the uh, smoke filled skies uh, that we've had for the past week or so. Um, cool temperatures. So cool that I ended up doing my 11th fastest 5K this morning, according to Training Peaks, which I highly recommend using. In fact, you can get a Training Peaks premium account through my Patreon page for $13, and it's $20 if you get it month to month through Training Peaks. But what's nice about the my 11th best 5K this morning walking, of course, was that you know I probably walk a 5K every day. So you know I've got a couple hundred 5Ks under my belt for 2020, and I just kind of floated through a nice one this morning. So it was really fun to be able to finally see some results. I think I've been getting some good sleep. As I said the other day, I got nine hours, which was amazing for me. And then last night I slept pretty good and been sleeping a little. Of course, I am tapering for my 100-mile race at Ride to Walk. This weekend, a actual real-life race here in California, Northern California. Smoke may be an issue, but we're hoping it isn't. You can come join us still. Um, it's, uh, you know, you can find an ultra sign up, Thunder Ultras, Ride to Walk 100. And uh, you can save 10% on your entry fee by using the Noise 10 code. Jake Jackson, our USA 24-hour world team member, he helped the team win a gold medal. He's going to be there. Uh, the gesture's going to be there. You know, putting in on his march to 200 hundreds in a lifetime. <clears throat> and Ray Sanchez is going to be in the 100 mile in 24 or 2, and he's done over 10 bad waters. I should really look it up. So it's going to be a fun race put on by Craig Simmons, who I've known and also did an interview with. So on with some other news, because this is Endurance Noise Daily. And um, we had a track meet yesterday in Berlin. Of course, NBC, once again, screws it up, doesn't have the coverage on. You know, you pay for the track package, which I used to do, um, you know, and then they don't put it on there. Then they throw it in the Olympic Channel, and then they cut out races. But the amazing thing was that Carson Walholm continues to run the 400-meter hurdles amazingly fast. He now has five of the 12 fastest hurdles. He's got number two, three, nine, tied for 10th, and number 12. He ran a great race last day. There was a really good... Uh, 1500 Shannon Roberry, who's been around quite some time, she runs 402.56, and that's a season best for her. And she got third. Um, Jonathan Galt reports that um, Jessica Hall, who ran for Oregon recently, she um, has had a great month. She's gotten two Australian records. She did the 5000 in Monaco in 1443, and now 1504. 0042. Wow, just barely missed breaking four minutes. And she's only 23 years old. Congratulations to her. Laura Muir Britton got her fifth straight victory and went 357.40. And her teammate um, just barely missed, uh, Whiteman barely missed breaking four as well. Um, there was a steeplechase in the race. There hasn't really been a real significant steeple in quite some time. And no one had broken 930 until this week. Uh, a Kenyan. Uh, Kilian upsets world record holder Beatrice Kepichek in Berlin to win in 906.14. Wow, so no one broke 930 all year. And so they definitely uh, got it done there. And then, of course, John Gold says, This is really poor by NBC. They have the rights to the ISTF meet today in Berlin. They're showing it on the Olympic Channel, yet they don't have a live stream online. What exactly are NBC Sports Gold subscribers paying for? And I was paying for it, but thankfully, when, well, not thankfully, but COVID came, they gave me a refund and. I don't really see any point in redoing it because it just it's not live and the coverage is just terrible. It just shows you the level of disrespect they have towards the sport. So, But speaking of something a little better, Rich Gonzalez of Prep Cal Track just reminds us that coming Sunday night, which was last night, of course, episode two drops of the docuseries car for the 2019 showdown cross country between uh, Great Oak and Newberry Park. I watched episode one. It was really good. So I've got something I'm going to definitely get to do today. Oh, you know, I keep forgetting today is Sunday. I'm just so messed up on my days. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because the gesture went off and ran a race on Friday. And then I just did a podcast with him and just been thinking the whole time that it's yesterday was Sunday. But today is Sunday. Remember, today is Sunday. Hard to keep track of COVID when it's COVID, plus hard to track when you work for yourself. Of course, I usually DoorDash Monday through Friday. So I should keep that track. track. And speaking of track, Vin Lannanen who the other day chided um, Minnesota for dumping their their track field team. He says, um, Tone Death is the elimination track and field program at flagship university in a city that has been at the center of social injustice. Track and field is one of the sports that provides access to students of color. College track and field provides access to education for thousands of students of color every year. As these programs are eliminated, what happens to these student athletes and their coaches? Speak up. And, and it's definitely a tone death 
decision, um, but it's also just been a financial one. And, you know, football is king. Football pays the bills. Basketball is right up there, too. And then anything after that, you know, and those two sports are protected by Title IX where you don't have to have, you know, an equal balance. And, and then so that's why men's sports get discontinued in many, many schools. So it's unfortunate. It would be nice to have a solution. It's definitely going to hurt tracking more and more because, well, you know, one, the coverage is terrible, the pay is terrible, and now if our athletes from when they go to high school can't compete in college, you're going to see American um, doing worse and worse and worse as the years go along. Unless, you know, the teams kind of, at least in the distance, and I guess the sprinters have their thing too, you know, but like a lot of the shoe companies are now picking up and, high, you know, um, getting kids right out of high school. There's been a few kids right out of high school, and maybe that's the future, kind of like the European model that has clubs. The pro model will be get grab kids out of high school and they won't go to college to compete, which makes sense too because, you know, college sports is a big scam. I mean, you know, these kids, especially football, basketball players, are making a school tons and tons of money and really not getting a whole lot out of it. So, anyways, that was my rant. As always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic. <laughs>